Bubba Rovers return to Championship action this Wednesday night to take on, of course, High Flying. Still in the mix, promotion chasing Bristol City. But of course, we're going to have to do it without Bradley Dack. Where do we go from here? We'll take a little look next. Right, folks, back once again with another match preview. This time, looking forward to Blackburn Rovers taking on Bristol City at Ewood Park, our third home game in a bloody row. Uh, of course, we'll talk about that in just a second. If you're new to the channel, where the heck have you been, boys? Smash your subscribe button to keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, Championship related, World Football related. We're all here. Underwall Ruski, that's right, boys, because of course, Dakarino out big time, of course, for the season, and of course, it'll go even farther than that. Um, and of course, Adam Armstrong, goal scoring machine, has not been used for the past couple of games, but of course, a lot of responsibilities will be lying on his shoulders. Uh, we'll take a look at that, of course, in just a minute. But before then, I want a big, big shout out, of course, to the Patreons. You know who you are, the VIP band of brothers for supporting the channel behind the bloody scenes. I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And if you are interested in supporting the Band of Brothers, get stuck in the old description down below. But until then, let's talk about the match. Of course, that's coming right around the corner. It is Rovers taking on Bristol City at Ewood Park. Let's get into it. So here we bloody go, folks. Here we bloody go. Kick it off, of course. Rovers taking across Bristol City at Ewood Bloody Park. Of course, Bristol City. Of course, last season, finishing in 12th. Uh, now under the mentorship, of course, Nigel Pearson, who's had a decent response from his from the team since he's come in um of course taken over from who was it who was it was it i don't even know it was some guy from within i can't even remember his name but i never believed in that manager uh pearson of, of, of course is a decent decent manager at this level and can uh, get responses from his teams and of course it seems to be working okay for them at the time being so of course let's take a look at the numbers that matter of course both sides playing 36 matches this season on average both banging in around about one goal a game of course the rovers were up to two goals a game for the vast majority of the season, but of course they've gone off the gone off the wayside of let of of, of of recent form anyway. Of course, uh, around about 14 shots per match for Rovers, eight for uh, for Bristol City, two yellows as well compared to their one. Uh, we've, we average about five corners compared to their three. Also picking up a couple uh, extra fouls as well. Uh, we have better success in the area, of course, better success with possession, of course, better uh, success with our passing as well. But guess what? They come up uh, above us in the table. That's all that matters at the end of the season is where you lie. And uh, right here, right now, Bristol City are better uh, positionally than Rovers of course let's take a look at the uh, home versus away form here this is away uh, the Bristol City's away stats compared to our uh, form at home uh, again same sort of stuff for the for the goals shots again going in favour of Rovers 13 to their 7 again corners pretty similar and for the vast majority nothing really changes to be fair let's take a look at the goals scored then Rovers coming at you with uh, a, a, a banging in about 49 goals this season compared to their 39 we scored 35 through open play they've got bang, they're banging in 30 uh, they're better with set pieces scored 6 for them 4 for us 4 Six counter-attacks for us. Just the one for them. Just only one penalty so far for, of course, Bristol City. Four for Rovers. Uh, and one big for OG, giving them a uh, share of the spoils. And there you can see down here the shots per game. 13.6 for Rovers uh, compared to the 8.1. With a conversion rate for 13% for them, 10 for us. How uh, about goals conceded? Well, 41 goals conceded by Rovers. 48, believe it or not, for Bristol City, which is a bit of a shocking stat. 27 through open play for both sets of teams. And uh, they've conceded 17 through set pieces. That could be an area that Rovers could exploit if we decide to play to that strength of course uh, the likes of uh, Dolan uh, Elliot um, uh, Armstrong even even who else is the Hobbits we of course playing the Hobbits uh, up top will likely limit our options up top and set pieces we'll be relying on the taller guys the Gallagher's the Brereton's and maybe even the set piece uh, specialists at the back there with Lennon and Harbour Bellis maybe getting a goal uh, as for penalties we've we've conceded four they've conceded three that have been converted anyway and of course they've received around about 14.5 shots a game per match uh, we've received around about 12 um, as for what else we got, of course, these are the, the key figures of the of, of the season. Uh, of course, the majority of Rovers possession coming in the uh, own third, 41% down the middle third, and 28% in the opposition third. As for Bristol City, uh, a bit similar stats here. 44% of all their possessions kept in the middle third, with 31% of their uh, kept in their own third and 25, just 25% in the opposition third. As for their attacking avenues, Rovers coming down, it's pretty much identical here. Uh, left and right hand side, 30% of all the pos possession coming down the, the flanks with 24% down the middle as for Bristol City 38% down the right 36 down the left and 26 down the middle as for the shots 59% of all Rover shots coming in the 18 yard box 37% long range babbles and just four in that scrappy dappy do Bradley Dak area of course
course, no DAC. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, of course. Uh, kicking off for the Bristol City shots coming 54% of those, all their shots in the 18 yard box, 35% long range bad boys, and 11, just 11 in the 6 yard box. Uh, as for uh, whereabouts they take place, 20% uh, uh, coming down the left, 64% down the middle, and 60% down the right. That's Rovers, as for Bristol City, 68 down the middle, 13 down the right, and 19% down the left. Um, let's take a look at the stats then here. Of course, the numbers that matter for the, for the key personnel. Adam Armstrong got 20 goals. He's been out for the past two or three games. Of course, we've been doing okay without him. But I guess without Dak, uh, we're going to have to recall him. Um, um, hopefully, he's fresh, fresh and ready to go because uh, we need some inspiration. Uh, Gallagher got himself five goals. As has Burton and has does uh, Harvey Yellow as well. As for the discipline, uh, Bradley Johnson's got himself seven yellows. As does Dara, Daryl Lennon, uh, Douglas and Rothwell both have five. The only red card to, 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 to record is uh, Daryl Lennon with one red card this season. As for the goals for Bristol City, 10 for Diodaru. Of course, he scored against Rovers last round. Naki Wells has got nine. Semeno has got five. As Martin's got four. As for discipline, Hunt's got four, uh, six yellows. Lansbury, Wells and Diodou have got uh, four apiece. Uh, of course, two reds. Mason and Diodou get themselves sent off this season. As for the starting 11s, I've gone with this for Rovers. Uh, pretty much uh, as, well, not as you were. I've got a, little, a, little bit, a couple of little changes here. Of course, Kaminsky between six. Douglas stays at left back. Lennon and with Bellis make up the centre back pairing with Nyambe continuing at right back. Even though we did lose to uh, Bedford. Unfortunately, I thought we were the better side. Uh, Buckley Tribe will continue in midfield. Then I've got Ranky Costello because, of course, uh, it was uh, that's Dax, Bradley Dax position. You could stick Rothwell in there and it might be Rothwell. Uh, further up the field, I'm going to go with the, with the height of Brereton and Gallagher on uh, joining Armstrong up top. So the likes of Dolan and the likes of Elliot could come off the bench to provide a bit of spark. But uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the, the, all our strikers, to be fair, and, and hopefully uh, the pace of Armstrong, the height of Brereton, and of course the, and Gallagher can cause some problems as well. Get them not, not the best, uh, but I'll have to do. As for the opposition, uh, Bentley between the sticks. They've got Sessignon at left back, Hunt at right back, Callas and Maniapa in the midfield, uh, in, in the middle of the park there. We've got Masingo uh, alongside Lansbury in the middle. Of course, Casey Palmer, X Rove, of course, Semeno, Naki Wells likes to score against us, as does Diadu uh, to complete the lineup. And a very, very good side here. Of course, uh, they, they, they're not, they want to get promoted. They can see it in their, the, the hierarchy. They're making cutthroat decisions with their managers. Um, and they, they, I think, I think they're, they're going to spend another season in this division. I don't see them creeping into the top six with Pearson this season, uh, which uh, I guess will just make him make it a bit of a dodgy environment next season. You got, you got to. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that sort of environment. Yes, I know they, they desperately want to get up there, as do we. But, um, but um, yeah, I think they might be going about it the wrong way. Of course, the game will take place right here at Ewood Bloody Park. That's right. And, of course, the record uh, between these two sides of the grand scheme of things. They played each other 47 times, in, according to my knowledge. Uh, 20 wins for Bristol City, 16 wins for Rose, and 11 draws, of course. Mowbray's record against Bristol City is pretty good. He's, uh, he's actually managed against them the third most team he's managed against his whole career. Uh, it's not the greatest, though. He's actually won five of them, lost six, and drawn four. Picking up a 1.27 points per game uh, a ratio. He's also managed against Pearson uh, seven times in the past, just winning once. Uh, Pearson picking up three wins, and there's been three draws between, this, between the two, 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 two managers. Of course, 0.86 points per match for Mowbray on this one. Of course, uh, over, the rec over the recent uh, years, these two sides of the 12 times, six wins for overs, four victories for Bristol City, and two bloody draws. The biggest win for overs, 3-1 win. Uh, biggest win for Bristol City was a 4-1 win. Uh, we scored 20 goals against them. They scored 14 against us with a uh, 1.67 goals per match ratio against Bristol Bristol City, they've got 1.17 goals uh, per match ratio against us as well. Our form is pretty shit. Just one win in six. Uh, they're picking up three wins and three defeats in the past six games. 50% uh, form for them, 33% for us, which is pretty ghastly. Um, it says a year ago, Bristol City were number seven on the table with 54 points. They are now uh, 12 with 48 points. So they are uh, six points adrift of their, of their tally. And speaking of tallies, uh, I'm not going to bring up the graphic, of course. We are still one point ahead of my grand scheme of things for Tony Moby to better his tally from last season. Of course, we're not going to get playoffs, but for me, the season really lies on him bettering his points tally from last season. He's one point up. This is a must-win game in my eyes to continue that because of the next up, of course, we have the High Flyers leaders. That is, of course, Norwich. And I don't anticipate us getting anything out of that one. Um, of course, the recent occasions between these two sides, of course, the last six in all competitions has been two wins for Rovers, three for Bristol City and one draw last round. Of course, at Ewood Park was a 3-1 win for Rovers. Of course, Corey Evans, Tonson Adderabio and Adam Armstrong on the 
score sheet. Jamie Patterson opened up the scoring for Bristol City, gave them a lead, but unfortunately they did not hold on. Uh, of course, I also appreciate that this is a late, 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 late winner. Of course, Bristol City was an 82nd minute winner. Um, but uh, yes, it's it's been a it's been an iffy sort of rain. If you take a look at the last six, at you, we have a better record against them. Of course, three wins for us, just one for them, and two draws. Of course, so their, their last win was a was back in 2019. Was a one-nil win. Prior to that, a couple of draws as well. So it's not been it's not been home and hosed. Uh, but hopefully, Rovers can. Take their frustrations out on the season uh, with, of course, Bradley Dax's injury and everything else going on, bubbling around the scenes. Hopefully, we can we 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 do a we do a result, we do a win. This this is a catalyst. This, this could be a catalyst for the back end of the season. It is uh, I don't know what part of a of a of a quadruple of a games we've taken on Swansea, we've taken on Brentford, we've got taken on Bristol City, and we've taken on Norwich. Four uh, mega games, and so far we picked up one point. Uh, and if we can get four points. Out of that four, I'll be I'll be pretty content with that, uh, considering where we are in the world. Anyway, uh, of course, the record between these two, well, heading into this, Rovers' home form is not the best. Uh, without a win at Ewood in the last five, it's actually been three wins on the spin for Bristol City, scoring three goals in each one of the last three games on the road. So I'm hoping we can get a little bit of a, a, a response and maybe turn the tide on this one. But they'll have, they'll have the tails up, of course, for this one. As uh, the table looks like this, they sit in 12th, we sit in 14th. Uh, their away form is actually pretty yeah, pretty good, like I said. Picking up uh, 25 points so far. We've only picked up 24 at home. So they have a better away ro uh, record than we do at, at home. Um, take a look at the last five uh, games between uh, uh, for both of these two sides heading into this. Of course, Rovers coming to the back of this. Uh, just one win in the past five. Picking up a win against Millwall. Uh, we drew with Swansea. We drew against Coventry, but we lost to Reading and also lost to Brentford. Uh, just tight, tight 1-0 losses just by one goal. As for uh, Bristol City, they're coming to the back of this. On the a win against Birmingham, they did lose to Bristol City. Uh, sorry, they did lose to QPR. They did lose to Bournemouth. Uh, so just one win in three for them. Uh, but their waveform is the key. Uh, speaking of the Form. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Of course, the overall form, of course, Bristol City City in eighth. Uh, Rovers down into 20th. It's not good, but a win for us today could change that our fortunes a little bit. Um, we're down into, of course, where are they 20 for the moment? The home form for Rovers, we currently sit in uh, woefully 20th. Uh, Bristol City are actually worse, so it'd be better for us to play them at home. But their home form, uh, their away form is pretty good. Um, is there, they're in the, uh, where are they? 13th. This is surprisingly, um, you know, maybe that's just because the last three. If, if you take a look at the last three, their away form, they'll be, they'll be up there with the best of them the likes of Barnsley, Norwich uh, and co so uh, yeah the, uh, to be a, I think this is a, f a false reading here uh, their, their waveform is much better than this graphic gives you credit for um, as for the journey so far, of course, as you can see, uh, the, the the solid line was precisely they peaked. They peaked at second uh, early doors with the new manager, but again, it slowly went south. Uh, eventually, going down to ninth, uh, and eventually even worse, they went down to to a fifteenth. I mean, we've actually uh, uh, gone worse than they have. Of course, uh, peaking at sixteenth, climbing a little bit to fourteenth, and hopefully, we can start to climb a little bit and get to that top half of the table. Maybe push the top ten finish. Uh, as for uh, the games after this one, Rovers will take a Norwich, of course, at Carroll Road. Then it's Wickham, must-win game that. Bournemouth as well at home. I th I th I'm, I'm hopeful we can get something out of that as well. Cardiff will be tricky away. And, of course, Derby at home, again, must-win game. As for Bristol, they take on Rotherham on the weekend. Then they take on, of course, Stoke uh, after the international break. That's Coventry on the road. Uh, it's not in Forest back at home, of course, on the 10th of April, of course. And Sheffield Wednesday uh, will be the hosts on the 17th of April, of course. Now, have you heard a little bit of what I've had to say? Now, what about DigiCast? Well, here she comes, of course, with, a, with her opinions about the match, Digi, taking a bloody weight. Well, what's been going on around the championship then? Of course, I'll take a look at the stats and figures then. Of course, uh, possession team, the number one team at the moment is, of course, Norwich, 58.4% possession. Rovers are in there in fourth uh, with a 55.6% possession. Bournemouth and Huddersfield make up the top four as well, alongside Brentford, who are in fifth. As for the most aggressive, Stoke lead the charge there, 64 yellows and three reds. Birmingham are up there with, of course, uh, 61 uh, yellows and four reds. Sheffield Wednesday have seven reds, of course, to the name so far. As for the area duels, Cardiff lead the charge there, Birmingham, Stoke, and then Rovers into fourth. As for the shots per game, uh, Norwich 
actually the charge there, 15.5% of 54.5 uh, shots per game. Uh, as for Rovers, 13.6. Brentford, Bournemouth, and Barnsley make up the top five. As for the pass actually, Norwich did the charge there. Huddersfield, uh, Reading, and Brentford uh, in the top four, with Watford completing the five. Uh, as for the uh, table, it looks like this. Of course, Norwich lead the charge. Ten points clear over Watford, who are level on points with Swansea, who are three points clear over Brentford, who are five points clear over uh, the likes of Reading and Barnsley. Of course, Bristol City are in 12th and win for them. They can move up to 10th. Rovers are in 14th and win for us. We can move up to 13th and close in on the likes of Bristol City. As for the foot of the table, it's Wickham, Sheffield Wednesday, and Rotherham going down. Rovers are, what, 12 points clear of the drop zone. Hopefully, we're all right. Um, I don't want to get sucked into that. But, of course, new manager bounce of Birmingham, potentially. Uh, is it uh, the right manager bounce? Of course, Lee Bowyer coming in. Uh, this is the table. This is what's going to go on this weekend, of course. Have a look at it. Have a bloody look at it. Uh, yeah, anything that takes your fancy, of course. It's actually not this week. It's this midweek. Of course, the game of the weekend, of course, at Ewood. But, of course, Birmingham against Reading. New manager bounce there, potentially. Of course, Forest against Norwich will be a bit fruity. Uh, but Middlesbrough against Preston. Can uh, they get their season back on track? Cardiff against Stoke. Stoke need to win that one if they want to get a light push. Bournemouth against Swansea, probably the highlight. And uh, you never know what's going to go on with Wayne Rooney's boys up against Brentford. Uh, take a look at the top goal scoring charts. Of course, Adam Armstrong uh, falling uh, way, way off the charge at the moment. Of course, not played in the past three games. Maybe he can get, he can come back recharged, refreshed for, of course, uh, Bristol City. Of course, uh, Ivan Tony Lee's charged 26 goals to his name. Pookie's up there, though, in second 21. Lucas Jow gaining in on, on Armstrong as well. Keith Moore, Ayu, Power, Solanke, Woodrow, and Buenda make up the top 10. As for the assist, Buenda leads the charge there. Elise, uh, Tony, and Bembo, and Harvey Elliott completes the top five. Now, there you have it, folks. Now, your bloody Harvey. You've had uh, my opinion. You've heard Digicast's opinion, of course. Feel free to put your own opinion down in the old comment section down, uh, down below in the down there, of course. Hopefully, uh, we'll be back uh, at home for the game on Wednesday night for the watch along. So hopefully, you can join me then. So make sure you stick around for that. But if you are new, make sure you bang the old subscribe, bang, smash your thumbs up as well. And we'll do it all again very, very soon. Also, down in the old description down below are my uh, links to my other social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Twitch as well. And also, once again, if you want to support the channel in another way, you could become the latest member of the Patreon. We're out here in the middle of Delaware on the coast. Uh, catching some, some, getting a bit of a away time, you know, trying to chill out a little bit. It's been a bit mad of late. Uh, it's a bit chilly, but it's okay. It's, 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 we're on our own. Anyway, until then, I'll see you all very soon. Mask up six feet and all that kind of stuff. I'll see you all next time around for some more Rover Seas content. Until then, I'm out. <laughs>